to our last speaker of tonight, uh, and that is uh, Zane Village. Zane is a senior campaign strategist with Hill and Knowlton Strategies. And what that means, and what he does, no one knows. <laughs> Zane is also the host of, uh, Zane was the host of the Strategist podcast, uh, and is a frequent contributor to CBC's political panel, and his work has appeared in publications such as The Globe and Mail, The Toronto Star, and The Christian Science Monitor. Let's bring Zane up to the, uh, to the mic. That's quite a lineup to follow. Okay, um, before I get started here, uh, unlike my other presenters today, I, I did not have a lot of personal images, so I have used the power of uh, stock imagery. Uh, and because of that, I have provided the public service of labeling my stock imagery search terms in case you want to use some of these uninspiring images in the future, uh, which you will not want to do. Uh, but in case you do, uh, the terms are listed below. Okay, I think we're good. Let's start with a story. It's 1980 in the UK, and a group of people in the UK are trying to build a new startup. Yes, a new startup for the country. They want to take a different turn. They have this new female leader, they're first, and they're trying to turn the corner financially. This leader, of course, is a lady by the name of Margaret Thatcher, AKA Maggie from the block. Now, Margaret has, is highly quotable, highly British, and highly intelligent. The quote I want to focus on today, however, is this one, quote, Change is the only constant, and while economics may be the method, it's changing of the heart and the soul that convinces people. I'm a campaign strategist. What that means is I try to make you care about what I want you to care about using things you care about. That makes sense, trust me, I've been through this. And what I do is I try to figure out how to do change simultaneous to how to do communications. I need to be able to grapple with the change that is today and understand how I communicate to my audience. Now, there's a guy that we may know. He may be known as a clown, and we may want to dismiss him as a narcissistic racist, and we probably should. But one note on Donald Trump before we go further. A guy who understands his audience and lives and breathes that Margaret Thatcher quote, that's Donald Trump. He knows where his audience is, he knows how to find them, and he knows how to access them. More on him later. But there's three things I want to talk about today. Today we know change as today we know change as Uber. We know change as Airbnb. We, this is way more distracting than I thought. <laughs> Time, people, come on. Three things. Here they come. The first one to communicate properly, we need to start toppling romance. Topple romance with the platform that got you here today. Success that got you here today may not be what got you there tomorrow. You found your first customer for your small business on Google, good for you. You're not going to do that tomorrow. And more frankly, it's not going to be where you find them the next day. As soon as we get rid of our romance with the platform, we really rid ourselves of that resistance going forward. Let me give you an example in my world. Hey Zane, I'm a client of yours. Why are we not doing banner ads on this campaign? Well, Tony, when's the last time you clicked on a banner ad? Oh, never? That's why we're not doing a banner ad on this campaign. <laughs> Where is the attention? Be romantic to that and only romantic to that. Moving on. In a second, we will move on. Yes, this is a picture of my dad with a sick blazer and a second day in Calgary, but here's the real question, okay? How many of you here have had parents that said, I don't need Facebook, I've got email? A lot of them. How many of them two years later said, hey, how, what is this Facebook thing? It's the romanticism to the platform. You move on. And it's not just our parents. It's us. How many of us in my generation have said, what's this Snapchat thing? I'm not going to do it. That's for kids. And today, that's our prime form of communication. As soon as we look at the platform as only a delivery mechanism and get rid of our romance, we rid ourselves of that resistance. So the punchline is quite simply this. Number one, there's diminishing marginal returns on how we move forward on some of these things. And if we rid ourselves of romance, we are then able to move beyond and seize opportunity. Here's the second thing I want to focus on. I want to be able to topple what we think are assumptions. I want to topple our ability to say, you know what, this is an assumption that I have, and that's an assumption I want to keep in place. That slide should be coming up in a second. Let's figure out what is actually new. So much of what we do in communications is not new. And we feel like the headwinds are so strong, that change is so vibrant, that change is so aggressive. But if we dissect what is actually new versus what isn't, we get into a place where we realize the headwinds are reduced. 
Let me give you an example. Today, the biggest thing in marketing and communications is this whole concept of psychological marketing. I know what you believe in, so I'm going to market that to you. This is new, so new, that governments want to legislate against it. You know what? This was first found in the 1920s when Carl Jung not only made an academic practice, but a real practice. In 2008, the Obama campaign was heralded for this app that they made that had the ability to figure out the demographic characteristics and what each community believed in and report that back to the top. You know who else did that? The ancient Greeks, 500 BC. Here's the punchline. The punchline is this. There are things that are going to be new, but there are theories that are going to be old. We need to figure out what the strategy is in between. If we realize... I actually do not have much to say on this slide, so your laughter is actually a good button. If we realize what is old and what is new, we are able to combine and, and find these headwinds much more better, and we're able to tackle it much more effectively going forward. And that leaves us in a place where, when we look at the campaign team of Obama in 2008, and I told you, you know, that is heralded as a pinnacle. If they had three new platforms but 400 old strategies, change looks like a lot more palatable for you and I. Change looks a lot more palatable for a business who now wants to communicate in a similar fashion. And this brings me to my third and final point, and maybe most important. Let's topple the notion of copy and paste. It did not work for democracies in the Middle East, and it does not work for how we communicate. The universal message is gone. We are all individuals. We are all wanting to be communicated in ways that matter to us. Right now, if I'm not engaging, if I'm not useful to you, you have this. You put this up and you've got the entire world against me. You can communicate on that. So why are we communicating with universal messages to everyone? We are all on our individual track. And because of that, we need to be spoken to with our own motivations, with our own mindset, with our own psychology, all in mind. But that's not the only reality, because compounding that, we've got an array of other issues. We today have less shared experiences. We have less shared experiences. We don't walk in front of the, we don't sit in front of the TV as a family watching the same news anymore. We overestimate how much people believe in us. We have heightened expectations. Facts don't change our feelings. Trump understands that. We, this is our new reality of how we are as individuals. So let me summarize it this way. Number one, and actually, no, let me, let me actually speak to you. <laughs> what, this means, what this means to you is there are individual journeys for all of us. We need to be communicated as individuals on our own vertical journey. It's no longer about communicating to the message, it's finding the individual. Which leads me to this, let's summarize. What have we learned? Number one, let's topple romance. Number two, let's dissect and figure out what's actually going on and what are the assumptions. And number three, let's get rid of copy and paste. I started with a Thatcher quote, I'd like to end with the one as she famously said, peace out homies.